Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So uh, I've been trying to make this tutorial for like a week now, but my sinuses have been going nuts. A combination of being a little bit sick and my allergies have just made it uh, inaudible to listen to my tutorials, I think. So I decided to hold off until I was feeling a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit better. Hopefully it doesn't sound so bad, uh, but I'm getting restless. So I wanted to get started. I'm doing a series on particle emitters in Apple's Motion. This is going to be part one, and let me show you what we're going to be going for in part one. I have the video here rendered already. It's a holiday montage, if you will, with some snowflakes. Those are the particles. There's two different snowflakes being emitted. You can see that they're dropping from the top. Let me go ahead and minimize this real quick. I have Apple's Motion open. I'm going to go ahead and try something different. I don't charge for my tutorials, um, but I'm going to... I've been asked for the the project files and uh, to help support 40TV I'm going to offer the project files for a small fee you can get them at 40tv.com slash shop um, for this particular tutorial there will be a link um, inside the description if you do purchase them it will come with the motion project template file and both the snowflakes created in uh, in Photoshop that I created also as well as a rendered copy of the video um, just for reference so Let's get started. If you do not have your own snowflake, you can go ahead and create one or use the ones inside the project files if you purchase them. I'm going to go ahead and drag this one into my project. When I do so, it creates a group. I'll go ahead and rename that group Snowflake Group. After doing so, I'll select the snowflake image. I'm going to reposition what's going on up here and I'm going to press Shift Z to fit it to my window. After doing so, I'll click back over here on the image of the snowflake. And you can create particle systems uh, off of images, videos, as well as um, image sequences. But right now we're using an image. It can be a Photoshop file, a JPEG, etc., etc. This Photoshop file has some transparency. I'll go ahead and go over here. I can click on this button to create a particle emitter, or I can press E on my keyboard. After doing so, what happens, we create a particle system with a cell containing whatever was selected when we pressed E or clicked on that button. Then our particle, or now our image, um, is turned off. We can turn it back on, but it doesn't make a difference right now. This is just the original image that the particle system is referencing. Underneath the particle emitter, we have a cell. If I turn off the cell, we won't see anything. You can have multiple cells in one emitter system. I'm going to go ahead and click, uh, select the particle emitter system, and I'll go ahead and go over to the inspector. Obviously, if we have our HUD up, we can see some of the options, but these options are limited in our controls in the HUD. You can access more of the controls for the particle system here in the inspector. You'll notice under emitter controls, we have several options. Below you have cell controls, and cell controls are only going to show if you have one cell in your system. If you have multiple cells, which we will have later, because if you remember in the beginning movie, there were two different snowflakes dropping uh, from the top. So, hence two different cells in one system. But for now we have one cell, so those cell controls show up. In the emitter controls, you can change where the particles emit from based on the shape. So right now it's set to a point. If I press spacebar on my keyboard to audition, you'll notice that that image or that particle is being emitted from a point here in the center and it's being emitted based on these settings here under the uh, cell controls as well as the emitter controls. The emitter controls are controlling how it's being emitted so it's being emitted from a point but this can be changed to a line, a rectangle, a circle, a burst, a spiral, a geometry, an image. We're going to talk about some of these other options in other uh, parts of the series, but for now let's talk about line, because line is what we're going for. Now you, can, you can't currently see the line that they're being emitted from. If I press spacebar, it looks very similar, except you notice that they're bouncing from side to side, it looks like, on the screen. If we right-click, we can go down here to the emitter tool. Alternatively, we could click here and go down to adjust item. A generic term, which also, when having emitter selected, is to adjust the emitter itself. Now when I click and I drag on these points, you'll notice that the line in which they are being emitted from is extended. So if I go ahead and go back to the beginning of my timeline, press spacebar, you notice the particles are being emitted from this line. 
That's exactly what we're going for in this particular example. I'm going to press spacebar on my keyboard to access the hand and I'm going to drag this part of my canvas down. I'm going to drag this portion up here of my line of the emitter. Now one of the things that you noticed a few seconds ago when I press spacebar, they're shooting out in all different directions. Well in order to control how these particles are being emitted, we can add a behavior to this emitter system. If we come on over here and we click on the behaviors tab and we go down to simulations, it may be off your screen right now, but we're going to gravity. When I select gravity and I have some type of acceleration, it's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to add gravity to these particles. When I press spacebar, you'll notice now they're falling. If I uncheck this uh, behavior, you notice they're being emitted and they're dying on screen. When I say dying, because each particle has a life. And if we select back over here to the particle emitter, click on the emitter tab, we'll notice the birth rate is set to 30, which means that there are 30 particles being born every second. If you notice down here, the life is set to 5 seconds. So, in 5 second time, when it's born at this line and it starts to be emitted here, once it reaches 5 seconds, that particle will die or disappear. You'll also notice there are randomness numbers here throughout the cell controls to add some variations to make things look a little bit more organic, if you will. But we're jumping all around. Let's go back to the behavior over here, gravity. I'll go ahead and turn it on. When I select it, we can adjust this slider here to affect how much gravity is being uh, applied. So at a setting of 30, you'll notice that some particles are falling, some are staying up here. We're going to increase this number, I don't know, let's set it to 150. We're also going to come back over here to the particle emitter, switch back over the emitter tab, and we're going to change the birth rate. Let's change it down to 5 so we can see a little bit more of what's going on. We'll bring our playhead back to the beginning and press spacebar. So as you can see, the particles are now dropping down from that line. Okay, that's pretty cool, but wait a second, you're saying these, these snowflakes are way too big. Well, we can change that. If we scroll down here to the cell controls, now notice we're currently on the emitter tab of the emitter. If you had multiple cells, you could click on the individual cells, and then you would be on the particle cell tab. Because remember, the, the cell controls are only going to show up. It's only going to show up in the emitter if there's one cell, which currently there is, so it's okay. I'm going to scroll on down here, and you'll see that there is a scale attribute. I can drop this down to, let's say, 20%. If I do, that's 20% of the original size. Well, notice, below most uh, options, there are randomness functions. So if I want there to be some randomness in my scale, I can introduce that here. The randomness function is an uh, addition and a sub subtraction to whatever number you have selected. So if I set this to 30, this is adding 30% uh, on top of 20%. It doesn't make it 50% of the original, it's 30% on top of 20%. The, the mathematics are, are not uh, adding these two numbers together, it's 30% of 20%. And then minus 30% of this 20%, right? So now as you press spacebar, you'll notice I have all these different particles. You notice at the beginning, one of these particles jumped up for a second before it dropped down. If we didn't like that, what we could do is we could increase the amount of gravity. But remember, when I press spacebar here, you'll notice that there's a frame per second in my canvas. Right now, this project is set to 30 frames per second. Later on, when we add another cell, this number is going to take a dip. Of course, also, if we increase the amount of particles, if we increase the birth rate, let's say to 73. Well, maybe not there, but 272, still not there. My system is not that bad, but once we start going up, see at 1,000 particles a second, we're dropping to 12 frames a second. So depending on what you're working on is going to determine how hard of a hit you take. Which brings us to another point. When we scroll down here, if our system is taking too great of a hit, we can change this, show particle as, instead of image, we can set it to wireframe. We can set it to lines, or we can set it to points. 
all of these particular options besides image do not need to be rendered. So if I set it to points and I have my birth rate set to 1000, I'm still going to get some incredible frame rates. I'm not going to jump down to two frames per second, for example, because it's not having to render each of those images. It's just having to display all of those points. But for our example, we'll leave it at image. Again, we're only working with five uh, particles per second, which is pretty manageable. Another thing that you'll notice if we scroll back to the beginning, if this is the beginning of the card or video, um, you'll notice that the particles start up here. One of the ways to get around that is we can click on this emitter and we can drag it in our timeline so that the start already has particles hitting the bottom. Then we can come over here and we can extend this out to the end. And by doing so, now when we start our video at zero and we press spacebar, it already has some particles going on here. But you say, wait, what if I don't like this particle being here, this one being here? Well, we can come down here and you'll see that there's a random seed. This random seed randomizes where the birth rates are going to happen. And by clicking it, this is going to change. Now, if you open this up inside of your computer and you typed in this exact number, it would replicate what's going on within my scene. Because even though that this is random, it can be replicated. So, next thing we're going to do is, hey, maybe we want these particles to spin. Okay? By changing their spin right here, it's just going to change where they are currently pointed. And because these are symmetrically round objects, changing that is not going to make a difference. But if we introduce maybe 180 degrees of spin randomness, you'll notice that when I press the spacebar, now when they fall, they're spinning as they fall, right? Um, if we want to change a little bit of randomness of their life, maybe we don't want them to disappear by the time they touch the bottom. If we scroll through here, we'll notice the gravity is making sure that they go from top to bottom before five seconds is up. But if they did not, we'd go ahead and change this to 10 seconds because our composition currently, if I scroll out a little bit, is 10 seconds long. So, if we wanted to make sure that each particle lived the life of our composition, we'd make sure that the life parameter was set to 10. If we wanted to introduce some randomness, we could go ahead and change that number here. We can adjust the speed in which they are being propelled from that line here. So again, I'm going to go ahead and press spacebar. I'm going to bring this line down a little bit so we can see a little bit more what's going on. And if I in increase this speed, you'll notice they're just going everywhere, right? Because this speed, uh, this speed number basically is implying how fast they are thrown from whatever point they are emitted from. In this case, we're using a line, but remember in the beginning we were, it defaults to using a point. So how quickly is it propelled from that line? If we change this to zero, Notice the only thing that's controlling the directional movement that they're making is the gravity behavior here. If we come over here to this gravity behavior, we turn it off and we press spacebar. Notice now they don't even move in any direction because there's a zero speed set and there's no simulation to their movement. So if we turn gravity on, let's say we wanted them to go up. If we put this to negative 150, now our, gra now our particles are going to float up because we have a negative gravity number, right? Makes sense. We'll switch it back down to 150. I'll press spacebar on my keyboard. I'll go ahead and reposition this line off the screen. I'll go back to the beginning of my timeline. I'll go ahead and press shift Z to fit my canvas to my, uh, my viewable area. I'll switch back on over to my emitter. Now let's say we want to introduce um, some color to this cell. I can click on the cell itself, go to particle cell, and over here you'll see that there is a color mode. Right now it's set to original, but we can change to either colorize them, setting a particular color, or we can go over life, so that basically they start as one color and as they begin to die, they change to another color based on a gradient value. We can say pick from a color range, and that's what we're going to do in this particular situation. So you have a presets dialog box here. 
We can switch to different presets. Let's say we like blue sky. If we twirl down the arrow right here, scroll down a little bit, we can change right now each of these snowflakes are taking from this gradient between this light blue to this darker blue. On top, this white uh, color picker itself is opacity. So right now they are fully opaque the whole time of their uh, lifetime, if you will. But if we wanted them to fade out, we could click on here, add another opacity uh, bubble, drag this down, let's say a little bit lighter. And if we scrolled in our timeline, unfortunately we're not seeing them die because, or we're not seeing the particles die, so we're not going to see this opacity over life uh, thing. If we want to remove a color swatch, we can just uh, click on it, drag it, pull it away. Same as here. If we clicked here to add another color, let's say we wanted to set red, you'll notice that it updates. It's also, it's not just selecting red. Here, between the gradations between this blue and this red, you'll see that that's happening here as well, right? If we don't like that, we can click on the swatch, pull it down to get rid of it, and let's leave it at this for now. Go ahead and play with it as you see fit. So now we've got these uh, crazy blue snowflakes, and maybe we, you can also click on this additive blend. So when particles are on top of each other, they are going to add their colors together in a blend mode set to add, right? Next, let's switch back over to our file browser. We'll take this snowflake right here. We're gonna go ahead and drag and drop it on top of the, um, actually we're gonna drag it right there. On top of the emitter. And when we do so, you'll notice, well, you might not notice, but currently the image is on. You'll see it's blocking one of these snowflakes. If we come over here to filters, go to color correction, while having this snowflake, snowflake selected, remember this snowflake is black, we wanna switch it to white. I did that on purpose just to show you. Um, we can go over here to color correction, come on down to um, colorize. And when we select colorize, we'll go into the inspector. We wanna remap, remap our black to white basically brings up the color picker. I'll click on white when we do so. Now this particular image is switched on over to white, right? When we brought this in, we brought this into our project. It came in under its own group. We can drag this into below the other image. Okay, now that we've dragged that out of its group, we'll go ahead and delete that group. This second snowflake here, what we wanna do is input it into this particle system. But if I just go ahead and click and drag and drop this onto our particle system, what's going to happen is it's gonna create a cell with all the default values. Let's say I wanna use all the values of this current uh, uh, cell. All I have to do is select this particle cell, right click on it, go to duplicate. When I do that, basically I'm gonna have two copies of these particles here. If I take this particular image, click and bring it until we see that little arrow that's pointing diagonally up to the right, and then let go, you'll notice that it just dropped it on top with the exact same options as the other particle. I can then go ahead and hide this particle, or not this particle, I'm sorry, this image by unchecking this box here, but now we have a problem. We'll notice that this image or this particle system is exactly on top of the other one. Well, how do we fix that? We can click on the particle cell, we can scroll down to the bottom, and we can change the random seed. When we do that, notice they are not on top of each other, right? So now if I go ahead and press spacebar on my timeline, you'll notice that we have two different types of snowflakes dropping from the top. Maybe we want to stretch it out a little bit more because they're not cutting into the sides enough. Maybe we want, we want to increase the birth rate of one and not the other. So let's do that. Let's, for this particular one, increase this up to seven. The birth weight rate randomness will even add a, f I don't know, we'll add a two here so that sometimes there's going to be nine per second, sometimes there's going to be five, and then of course, sometimes seven. So sometimes with a two plus or minus the original birth rate by adding that random number. Maybe these round ones in comparison to these 
pointed ones are the, the size maybe bothers you because these are filling up much more space so we can decrease their size if we select the particle cell of that particular one here we scroll down to the bottom we switch this from 20 percent maybe down to 15 and change the randomness to 25 for example notice they fit just a little bit better within the scene i go ahead and press spacebar and you can see what's going on so next we're going to go ahead and add some text if I go ahead and select our snowflakes group, I can go ahead and close the emitter. I can click on the text tool. I can click within my scene. And when I do so, you'll notice my playhead wasn't at zero, so it created the text layer here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this to start at zero. I'll stretch it out so it lasts the full 10 seconds of our scene. Again, going back to the beginning. And right here, we're gonna go ahead and type happy holidays. When we do so, we can come back over here to the format. We can change the size so this fits more of our scene. Click on the select tool to move it around within our scene. Right now, these particles are not going to be interacting with our text. Let's say we want to change the color of the font. Um, we can do so by clicking on style. After doing so, we can change the color of the face. Let's say we want uh, 40 TV green. <laughs> And so when we do that, we'll notice that these particles are not interacting with our text. What's important to note is that we do not have a camera. So we'd want to go ahead and add a camera to our screen. When we do that, it's going to ask us, do we want to switch to 3D? We'll go ahead and click on Say Yes. When we add it to our scene, we'll notice that these particles are still happening in 2D. We can click on the right viewpoint. If I click in here and press Shift Z and I press Spacebar, you'll notice our particles are not happening in 3D, however they can. If I click back over here on the particle emitter itself, we'll notice that there's a checkbox here for 3D. When I click on that, you'll notice that they're now happening in 3D. Another important note, even though that this is now set to 3D, the render particles in local 3D is going to make sure that this does not interact with other layers within our group. If we wanted to interact with other layers in our group, we'll have to switch this to in global 3D. When we do so, this takes a hit on our render time as well as our uh, playback performance. Now, for example, let's say we wanted this, right, uh, right now everything is dropping from the top. And the reason that that's happening and nothing is shooting out to the sides is because we do not have a speed value set. If we come back into one of these uh, particle systems and we increase the speed, you'll notice that they are now being propelled in other directions, both out to the front, out to the back, etc. right? So we can do that with the other particle system as well, or the other cell. Turn this up just a tad. As we do so, we'll notice that when we select the text layer, we'll see where it sits. If we want to drag this in front a little bit, away from the background, if you will, we can do so. Now when we switch back to the active camera view, and we press spacebar, even before we press spacebar, you'll see right here that this particle is happening in front of the holiday layer. The reason that that's happening, again, if you select back onto the particle emitter uh, system, it's because we have 3D selected, we have a camera in place, and in global 3D is selected, right? If you do not make this change, and you do not have particles emitting in front of your text, it's not going to interact with that layer. If this text layer was in a separate group, they also would not interact with each other. So make sure the text layer is in the same group as the particle emitting layer, right? If you want them to interact. If you wanted all of your particles to fall behind your text, then just make sure that it's not set to 3D and you'll be fine. Um, let's see, another thing that we did not do, I'll go ahead and uh, minimize that group, if you will. We'll come over here to the library. We can come on over here to, let's see, we can select the gradient to put behind this, or we can just uh, select uh, generator and gradient. We'll go ahead and drag this over here to our project. We'll drag this group underneath our other group, and we'll come into the gradient inspector. What am I doing? Come on, brain, wake up. Um, we want to switch this gradient from linear to radial. 
and maybe we want to change the colors of this gradient, we can click on this button right, or right here to switch their points. We'll change this color from this light color maybe to a black. Then we will, let's see. Yeah, we can modify the start and end points. So if we bring this up, I'm sorry. If we bring this up, maybe bring there, something like that. Maybe that's what we like. Um, obviously we can add, continue to add more text. One of the other things you'll notice is again, I did not add this at the zero starting point of my project. So I'll drag this back over to zero. I'll extend this to the length of my project. I'll go ahead and bring this back to the beginning. I'll press spacebar to preview what we've got going on so far. I hope this gives you a better understanding of particle emitters and Apple's motion. Um, in future tutorials, we'll talk about different ways to emit particles and several of the other options. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you like this content, go ahead and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, guys, till next time, I'm out.